if you will turn with me this morning to our continued study in 1 Peter. We are in chapter 2, and we will be looking at verses 13 to 17. Very timely section today, as it deals with civil authority. Now, if you look up the word citizenship, that's what we're going to be dealing with this morning. So let's look at verses 13 to 17. Submit yourselves to every institution of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Let us pray. Father, as we meditate on this portion of scripture today, as your spirit enlightens our minds and hearts, as you draw us close to you, we ask that you would remind us of how important and timely this word from the apostle Peter is to us where we live today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to look at first the definition of citizenship as it comes to us from secular society. And citizenship is defined as, and actually there's two definitions. First one is the state of being vested with the rights, privileges, and duties of a citizen. And the second definition is the character of an individual viewed as a member of society. In other words, what kind of person are you as society looks at you? Behavior in terms of the duties, obligations, and functions of a citizen. Now, in our passage of scripture this morning, Peter did exactly that but he's looking at the Christian citizen, all right? A Christian citizen is a citizen of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. That is our first loyalty, is to God. And look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. The Apostle Paul says this, in fact, this reminds me of, of my uh, youth back in middle school days. Uh, Dad was uh, a, the person that ran the Royal Ambassadors organization. Uh, it was like, kind of like Boy Scouts for Christians with a Christian flair to it. Uh, and we earned badges, merit badges, that sort of thing. Uh, but... Uh, this is where this comes from, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That's what our job is as Christians, not just pastors, but every single Christian is an ambassador representing Christ, an ambassador for Christ, appealing to people that they reconcile to God. 
Now the question is, which duty or citizenship has the greater demands or claims on us? And as I already said, our primary claim and demand is we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent him. The claim of heaven is one of submission to God. Look in James chapter 4, verse 7. Now James, the half-brother of Christ, said, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So submission is part of the spiritual warfare that we are in that every Christian is in, that every Christian has been in, that every saint uh, from the before Christ was in. It's always been the same. It has not changed. Our enemy still remains the same, and our God remains the same. So let's look at what, uh, what we are to do as Christian citizens. And starting in verse 13, the very beginning, and as I've done before, I'm going to read you the literal translation, and, and a lot of this is very well translated, this sort of section here. It, it is very well literally translated. And the first section of this scripture, verse 13, is a command for submission. And Peter says, Therefore, be in subjection. Now that's the literal way. Be in subjection. Now the word that he uses here is hupotagete, and it literally means to be under a ruler. To be under a ruler. It is very reminiscent of Proverbs chapter 24, verses 21 to 22, where we read, My son, fear the Lord and the king. Let me repeat that. Fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate with those who are given to change. Now let's look at the Hebrew in that for a moment. The Hebrew says, Im shonim al titharab. And it literally is, and with the changelings, mingle not yourself. With the changelings. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, most of the translators take this to mean that the changelings are people that are innovators. They are always for making experiments on methods of government forms of religion. They are not content to stay with the things that are set in stone, as it were, uh, from, uh, from God. Uh, the things that God says, this is it, no modifications. Uh, we see when the law was given and uh, some of uh, Aaron's sons uh, two of Aaron's sons gave strange fire to God and God slew them because they did something that was not what he asked. And my, my feeling is from the reading of this is that what they did is they were copying something that the pagans did and they were trying to apply that to God. And folks, there's a lot of that going on in Christian circles today where there are pagan ideas that have been applied to God and that's one of the reasons why we have so many problems. Um, the most dangerous spirit that can infect the human mind is what uh, Proverbs is about. And that is not following what God has established, but always wanting to change things. Now, if that doesn't apply to what we see that's been going on in our nation, and in nations around the world, I don't know what would apply. Now, this is the rest of that verse, uh, verse 22. Now, he's talking about the, the people that, uh, that, he says, do not associate with those who are given to change for, 
their calamity will rise suddenly. Their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin that comes from both of them. And when he says both of them, he's saying those who do not fear the Lord and those that do not reverence the king. Romans 13. This is a portion of scripture that many people pair up with this portion that we read from Peter. Peter and Paul both discuss civil authority, the relationship that Christians have to civil authority. And so let's look at this. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 13, let every soul be subject to authorities above him. Now, by the way, again, this is the literal translation. For there is no authority except from God. This is something that people that are lost don't like to hear. There is no authority except from God. And those that are authorities by God have been appointed. Hmm. So if you hate the president... God put him there. That's what the Bible says. Or whether it was the last president or this one, God put him there. Have we learned anything about that yet? So that he who sets himself against the authority resists the ordinance of God. In other words, God has an order. He is prophetically moving events. And when you oppose that, you find yourself opposing God. And they that resist shall receive judgment to themselves. Isn't it interesting that this recent movement that we have in this country is called the resistance movement? Isn't it interesting that they had the resistance in France in World War II? I'm sure that's why they picked that name, resistance. And yet God says here, to resist means you will receive judgment to yourself. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. Now I know we'll probably, we would probably say, wait a minute, what about Hitler? Uh, what about Stalin and Mao and all these others? This is God's plan that rulers not be a terror. It doesn't mean that they won't be a terror, but God's plan was that they not be a terror to good works, but to evil ones. Do you desire not to be afraid of the authority? Practice the good, and you shall have praise from it. Practice the good. For it is a servant of God to you for good. Now, he says it. He's talking about the government. The government is a servant of God to you. Now, people in Washington, you need to hear that again. You're supposed to be a servant not a lord and master, but a servant. Some preachers, you need to hear that too. You're supposed to be servants. But if you practice evil, fear. That's the literal in what Peter's saying. But if you practice evil, you need to be afraid. For not in vain it, the government, wears the sword, and that sword is the executioner's sword in Greek. For it is a servant of God, an avenger for wrath to him that does evil. An avenger. Remember, God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. 
And so the government stands in God's place to avenge when evil is being done. Our trouble is, is what do you do when the government is doing evil? Matthew chapter 22, 21. You knew I had to come to this. When Jesus was being entrapped by the Pharisees and they were asking about taxes, Okay. I have a feeling that taxes are going to be a rather sore subject in the near future for people around the world and in this country too. Then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And all that Jesus... It says they marveled, but this is exactly what Proverbs 24 said. My son, fear the Lord and the king. Do both. Do both. But you'll notice that the Lord is first. So why are we to submit? Well, let's go on in verse 13. He says, For the sake of the Lord. Now, there's some things that we need to remember. God tells us that he is orderly. That's why there is government. That's why people that are involved in the anarchist movement, um, you're never going to win. Even though maybe Lucifer is your poster child, he's losing too, and he knows it. God is orderly. And whether we are talking about a divine right, as a king would say they have, or a queen, or democracy, God is a God of order and not chaos. Now, he says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 31 to 33. And, of course, he's talking about church. He's talking about in worship service. And folks, there's an awful lot of congregations that need to hear this one because they don't practice it. Paul says, For you can all prophesy one by one. In other words, one at a time. So that all may learn and all may be exhorted. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. In other words, you can control yourself. Okay. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the assemblies of the saints, and all the called out ones of the saints. So if God is a God of order, what should our actions be? Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Paul says, Whether then you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Our actions are supposed to glorify God. Now, again, I keep reminding us what we have been seeing going on with this anarchist movement that's sweeping our nation. Uh, people that say that they are, if such and such happens, they're going to have riots. And, and I, I saw a figure, I think it said something about 400 cities. If, if uh, a certain person gets confirmed in the Supreme Court. Anybody that's doing this is going against what God says. They are anarchists. They are going against uh, uh, the Bible. They're going against what's written in the in the uh, Tanakh, uh, in the, the book of Proverbs. What are we supposed to do? Well, as I said, we're supposed to go do all according to the glory of God, and we are to imitate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In verse 23 of this same letter that we're looking from Peter, he says, and while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, 
but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. Folks, human judges do not always judge righteously. But God does. Well, preacher, you're talking about submitting and you've explained uh, that there's a command to submit, that we are supposed to, why, you've given some reasons why to submit, but how far are we to submit? Glad you asked that. Because Peter says in verses 13, the remainder of 13 on, on through 14, to every human institution for the sake of the Lord, whether to king as supreme or to governors as sent by him for vengeance on evildoers and to praise well-doers. God establishes all authority for the purpose of, number one, restraint of evil, number two, promotion of public good, and number three, to punish wrong. Now, what about this institution? This institution. The word is katisei, and it means an authority that was created or ordained. Now, let me ask you, who created the family? God. Who created law? You remember what the first law was? You can eat anything except from that one tree. That was the first law. God created that. Who created work? Well, God again, because go back to the garden. What did he say? He said to tend my garden. You were to work. Now, folks, a lot of people think that the work is, is bad sinful work is good God works and so do we so human institutions were created by God do you still want to go against human institutions then he says king a, a monarch we might even use the word dictator. Oh, that's a bad word, isn't it? You realize that dictator did not become a bad word until sometime in, uh, I'm trying to remember when it was. It was, it was back around the time of, of uh, Hitler and Mussolini. Uh, in fact, that Studebaker made a car that was called a model of a car. 